Hello everyone, welcome to another module in this online course strategy and introduction to game theory. So in the last module we looked at the Corno duopoly, so the example of the game we looked at as the Corno duopoly which is due to the economist Corno and it models a game between two companies that is a duopoly between two companies which are producing quantities which are substitutes are also known as statist, uh, strategic substitutes and uh, this game models the interaction between these two companies or the game between these two companies and uh, we looked at this game and we looked at the payoff functions we modeled the payoff functions of both these firms uh, involved in the duopoly uh, we found out the best responses of both these firms and then we derived the Nash equilibrium of the game. So just to do a brief recap we said that the payoffs of both these firms that the utility functions u1 of s1 comma s2 that is the utility of firm 1 as a function of its quantity s1 and the quantity s2 produced by firm 2 is given by the is given by the function s1 times a minus c minus b into S1 plus S2, right? And similarly, the payoff function U2 of S2, comma S1 is given as S2 times A minus C minus B S1 plus S2. So these are the payoff functions of the two firms, that is, firm one and firm two. So these are this is the payoff to firm 1 and this is the utility function payoff function for firm 2 and we also derived the best responses from these payoff functions. We said the best response S1 star, the best response S1 star which is also BR1 of S2 can be written as A minus C minus B times S2 divided by 2B which is equal to A minus C by 2B minus half S2. This is the best response S1 star. Similarly, we derived the best response S2 star and we said the best response S2 star which is also BR2 as a function of the quantity S1 that is the best response of firm 2 is given as A minus C by 2B minus half S1. These are the best response quantities. And let us now take an example and we again consider this example. Let us consider an example where A equals 10 and B equals C equals 1. Then we have S1 star equals 4.5 minus half S2 and S2 star equals 4.5 minus half S1. So, for the specific example where A is equal to 10 and B is equal to 1 and C is equal to 1, we have S1 star the best response quantity of firm 1 is equal to 4.5 minus half S2 and S2 star the best response quantity of firm 2 is 4.5 minus half S1. And now let us graph these two things although we already did it let us graph these things once again so that I can illustrate a slightly different point compared to what I illustrated last time. Let us take the scale between 0 and 10 again here I am going to take consider between 0 and 10 so 5 is approximately here at the midpoint. And what we said is S1 star is S1 star equals 
4.5 minus half S2, right? So if S2 is equal to 9, then S1 star equal to 0, and if S2 is equal to 0, S1 star equals 4.5, which is approximately somewhere around this, and hence the best response is going to look something like this. This is S1 star equals BR1, that is the BR best response as a function of S2. Now, similarly, we have S2 star equals 4.5 minus half S1, that is the best response S2 star as a function of S1, which means if S1 is equal to 9, S2 star is equal to 0. Similarly, if S1 is equal to 0, S2 star is 4.5, which is approximately around here. And once again, I can join these two and I get this. And we said this is the point 3 comma 3, where the best responses intersect. And this is the Nash equilibrium. This is the point 3 comma 3, where the best responses intersect. And this is the Nash equilibrium. We had already seen this. Now, let us take a slightly different approach. Let us try to analyze this game a little bit more by looking at this graph. Now, if you look at this plot, you can see that as S2 varies, that is for S2 is equal to 9, the best response S1 star is 0. And if S2, S, S2 is equal to 0, the best response S1 star equals 4.5, right? So, for all possible values of, so for S2, possible values of S2, the best response S1 star always lies between 0 and 4.5. So, these quantities which are greater than 4.5, the quantities S1 star or the best S1, S1 greater than 4.5 is never a best response. So, these strategies that is these quantities S1 which are greater than 4.5, these are dominated strategies. So, these are never going to be used by firm 1. So, these strategies that is quantity greater than 4.5 are not going to be used by firm 1. Let me repeat that argument again. When S2 is equal to 9, S1 star is equal to 0. And as S2 increases as S2 decreases from 9 to 0, S1 star increases from 0 to 4.5, finally reaching 4.5 when S2 reaches 0. And S, S1 star does not increase beyond 4.5. So, S1 star always lies between 0 and 4.5. As a result, all quantities S1 greater than 4.5, these are the dominated, these are dominated strategies. Similarly, if you look at all quantities again, if S1 is equal to 9, S2 star is equal to 0. If S1 is equal to 0, S2 star is equal to 4.5. Therefore, S2 star again lies between 0 and 4.5. Therefore, all values of S2 star greater than 4.5 are dominated. These belong to the dominated. These are dominated strategies. That is, these are never the best response. These are never the best response to any quantity produced by firm 1. So, what we are seeing is the best response of firm 1 always rise between 0 and 4.5. The best responses of firm 2 also always lie between 0 and 4.5. Hence, this game can now be reduced to this box where S1 star and S2 star lie always between 0 and 4.5. Since the best responses S1 star are always between 0 and 4.5, best responses S2 star are always between 0 and 4.5. Therefore, this game can now be reduced to this smaller box where S1 is restricted to 0 and 4.5 and S2 is restricted to 0 and 4.5. Therefore, we have eliminated the dominator strategies or eliminated the strategies which are not best responses 
to the strategies of the other firm. As a result, we have been able to reduce this game. Now, if you look at this game, now S2 lies only between 0 and 4.5. When S2 is equal to 0, S1 is S1 star equals 4.5. When S2 is equal to 4.5, S1 star you can see, you can verify is equal to 2.25. So, we are further saying since S2 is now after elimination of the dominator strategies only lies between 0 and 4.5, the best response S1 star in turn lies only between 2.25 and 4.5. So, this strategy is S1 star between 0 and 2.25 can now be eliminated because these are in the reduced game, these are dominated strategies since these are no longer the best response. Similarly, now if you look at this point, the strategy is S2 star, if S1 is 0, S2 star equals 4.5, if S1 is equal to 4.5, S2 star is equal to 2.25. Therefore, S2 star varies only between 0 and 2.25, therefore S2 star values, uh, therefore S2 star value, S2 star varies only between 2.25 and 5, S2 star values between 0 and 2.25 are in turn dominated strategies. So, these are also now in the reduced game dominated, these are again dominated strategies. So, these in the reduced game, these are the dominator strategies. So, eliminating these dominator strategies further reduces the game to this small box. Let me draw this box in this orange color. This reduces this game to further this small box. And now, again in this reduced game, you can see that one can further eliminate the dominated strategies, one can further eliminate the dominated strategies in this reduced game, in which case the box is going to keep shrinking even further and further, right. So, since now you can further eliminate the reduce uh, the strategies in this, uh, eliminate the dominated strategies, this box is going to keep sh shrinking further and further and this box is going to converge to this. Nash equilibrium. Thus, what are we doing here? What we are doing is we are eliminating the dominated strategies. In the first instance, we said that the strategies S1 which are greater than 4.5 and S2 which are greater than 4.5 are dominated strategies. So, these can be eliminated, therefore, the game reduces to the strategies S1 between 0 and 4.5 and S2 between 0 and 4.5. Now, in this reduced game, we are saying the further the strategies S1 between 0 and 2.25 and S2 between 0 and 2.25 are dominated strategies. So, these can be eliminated and therefore, the game further reduces to S1 between 2.25 and 4.5 and S2 between that is the quantity S2 between 2.25 and 5 and therefore, now we have a reduced game the element and therefore, keeping keep uh, that is repeating this process that is if we keep on repeating this process that is eliminating these dominator strategies further and further in each successive iteration this box is going to progressively keep shrinking and if this box is pro when this box is progressively shrinking, it converges to the Nash equilibrium. For instance, now you can see if S2 is between 2.25 and 5, S1 lies only in this range and if S1 is between 2.25 and 5, then S2 lies only in this range. So, the game further shrinks to this box and you can see this box progressively converges to the Nash equilibrium. This box progressively converges to the Nash equilibrium that is elimination of dominated, 
elimination of dominated strategies in this Corno, in this Corno game or this game of Corno duopoly, uh, uh, iteratively or ultimately leads to convergence to the Nash equilibrium. Right. So, this is an interesting perspective of the Corno duopoly. Let us look at another aspect in this game. Let us also now try to look again similar to the tragedy of commons. Let us try to look if there is another outcome which yields a higher payoff for both the players. We have seen the Nash equilibrium. The Nash equilibrium is S1 star equals S2 star equals A minus C by 3 B, right. And if A equals 10 and B equals C equals 1, we have S 1 star equals S 2 star equals 10 minus 1 by 3 equals 3. Let us look at the Nash payoff. The Nash payoff that is U 1 of S 1 star comma S 2 star equals S 1 star into a minus c minus b times s1 plus s2 which is equal to 3 times a minus c is 10 minus 1 9 minus b which is 1 times s1 plus s2 is 6 that is 3 times 9 minus 1 that is 3 times 3 equals so, the Nash payoff, the Nash payoff in the Corno duopoly the Nash payoff in the Corno duopoly game is U 1 U 1 of S 1 star comma S 2 star equals U 2 of S 2 star comma S 1 star equals 9. Now, let us try to find, let us try to see is there an outcome which yields a higher payoff for both. So, the question that we are asking is, is there an outcome Is there an outcome which yields a higher payoff for both the players? This is the same question that we had asked in the tragedy of commons. To look at this, let us look at a scenario with both these firms are collaborating. So, we have U 1 of S 1 comma S 2 equals S 1 into A minus C minus B times S 1 plus S 2 and u 2 of s 2 comma s 1 equals s 2 into a minus c minus b into s 1 plus s 2. Therefore, if we look at u 1 of s 1 plus s 2 plus u 2 of s 2 comma s 1 sorry this has to be s 1 comma s 2 this is equal to S 1 plus S 2 into A minus C minus B S 1 plus S 2 and you can see this quantity only depends on the sum quantity S 1 plus S 2. So, I can write this as equal to S t total times A minus C minus B times S t right, where S t is equal to S 1 plus S 2. So, the total utility that the sum of the utility that is U 1 plus U 2 depends on the only on the total quantity that is S 1 plus S 2. So, I can write this as U t that is the total utility 
of as a function of S t equals S t into A minus C minus B times S t which is equal to A minus C S t minus B S t square. And now, if I differentiate this with respect to the total quantity S t to find the optimal quantity S t for which the total utility that is the total payoff to firm 1 and firm 2 is maximized. Right. Remember this is a function of S t, right, a differentiable function of S t. So, I can differentiate this with respect to S t to find the total quantity S t for which then some utility u t is maximized and if I do that I get dou u t S t by dou S t equals a minus c minus 2 b S t which I equate to 0 to maximize which means S t star that is the quantity for which the total utility is maximized is a minus c by 2 b. And now similar to again the tragedy of commons we can assume that both S 1 that is of a firm 1 and firm 2 produce half of this quantity. So, we can set S 1 equals S 2 equals a minus c by a minus c by 4 b right. And again let us go back to our previous example where a equals 10, b equals c equals 1 and we have a minus c by 4 b equals 9 divided by 4 equals 2.25. So, both of them can produce a quantity S 1 equals S 2 equals 2.25 to get a higher sum utility. Now, let us look at the individual utility. What is u 1 of 9 by 4 comma 9 by 4 that is equal to 9 by 4 times a minus c that is 9 minus b 1 times s 1 plus s 2 that is 9 by 2 which is equal to 9 by 4 times 9 by 2 which is equal to 81 by 8. And if you look at this quantity 81 by 8 that is u 1 of 9 by 4 comma 9 by 4 that is equal to 81 by 8 which is equal to 9 times I can write 81 by 8 as 81 by 9 into 9 by 8 which is 9 times 9 by 8 a quantity which is greater than 1. So, this is greater than strictly greater than 9 which is the Nash payoff. right? So, when we look at the payoff at 9 by 4 comma 9 by 4 each of them is getting a payoff of 81 by 8 which is greater than the Nash payoff of 9. right? So, the outcome S 1 equals 9 by 4, S 2 equals 9 by 4 that is basically 2.25 yields a higher payoff it yields a higher payoff for both and therefore the nash equilibrium is not pareto optimal remember the nash equilibrium of this game is at 3 comma 3 s1 is equal to 3 s2 is equal to 3 where the nash payoff is 9 for both the firms we are saying that when s1 is equal to 2.25 and s2 is equal to 2.25 the payoff for both of them is 81 by 8 which is greater than strictly greater than 9 therefore both of them can strictly improve their payoff which means the nash equilibrium is not pareto optimal and therefore again we have an example of a game which is similar to the prisoner's dilemma since there is one nash equilibrium and the nash equilibrium is not pareto optimal so therefore this game the corner duopoly is again in that sense similar to the prisoner's dilemma. And now there might be an interesting question that might be in your mind that is why can't both these firms agree to produce this quantity 2.25 to improve their payoff which is a reasonable question. First as we have already reasoned they cannot explicitly collude 
to produce the quantity 2.25 to artificially inflate the price because that is illegal as we already discussed in the beginning that is that is not allowed by the anti collision treaties. Let us say anti collision laws, let us say they implicitly agree to produce this quantity 2.25. Let us go back and look at our best response diagram once again try to understand this dynamic better. We again have our best response dynamic where on the x axis I have where on the x axis I have S 1 and on the y axis I have S 2 and remember I am going to draw my S 1 star equals 4.5 minus half S 2 and also S 2 star equals 4.5 minus half S 1 and I can draw that over here. And now you can see the Nash equilibrium is 3 comma 3, but there is a point 2 comma 2 or 2.25 comma 2.25 which yields The Nash equilibrium is 3 comma 3, but there is a point 2.25 comma 2.25 that is S 1 equal to 2.25, S 2 equal to 2.25 which produces a higher payoff for both the firms. Let us say they implicitly agree to work at this point that is firm 1 and firm 2 make an implicit agreement to produce the quantity 2.25 each. What is going to happen in that scenario? Is that agreement going to sustain? Is that a self enforcing agreement? And you can see it is clearly not, because the moment S 2 agrees to produce 2.25, S 1 this is the curve S 1 star, this is the curve S 2 star, S 1 will deviate to its best response, S 1 will deviate to its best response that is S 1 will deviate to this point which is its best response. The moment S 1 deviates to its best response, S 2 will deviate to its best response which is this and in turn S 1 will deviate to its best response and you can see this again converges to the Nash equilibrium converges to any. Therefore, this is not a self sustaining equilibrium or a self sustaining outcome or a self enforcing uh, self enforcing agreement and the reason for that is even though the implicit implicitly agree to produce the quantities 2.25, 2.25 the moment there is no reason to stick to this agreement because back at their firms, firm 1 can play its best response to 2.25 because it wants to maximize its payoff. Seeing firm 1 deviating from that implicit agreement 2.25 firm 2 will deviate to its best response and in turn firm 1 will again deviate to its. So, each will in turn update by playing update their strategy by playing the best response to the other strategy and this is the best response dynamic and so each will update each firm or each agent will update its strategy by playing the best response to the strategy of others and this will subsequently converge to the Nash equilibrium and therefore, the Nash equilibrium is, on, is the only self sustaining outcome because at that point each is playing the best response to the other. By which I mean that firm 1 is producing S 1 is equal to 3, firm 2 is producing S, S 2 is equal to 3 and each is playing the best response to the other right S 1 star is the best response or 3 is the best response to the quantity 3 produced by firm 2, S 2 is equal to 3 is the best response to S 1 is equal to 3 produced by firm 1 at which point neither firm 1, firm 2 have no incentive to unilaterally deviate to another quantity and therefore, that is the only self sustaining or self enforcing um, agreement.
right. So, I hope that has clarified a lot of the interesting aspects about these games. First, we have looked at the Kurno duopoly from the, from the context of a dominated strategy. That is, we have looked at what happens when we progressively eliminate a dominated strategy in the Kurno game and we found that we converged to the Nash equilibrium. And the other point we looked at is what happens if they have make an implicit agreement, implicit agreement to implicitly collude and produce a lower quantity that is 2.25 each so as to artificially inflate the prices. We found that that is not an equilibrium, that is not a self enforcing agreement since both have an incentive to deviate and once they start deviating, they will indeed in turn converge to the Nash equilibrium which is the only self enforcing uh, agreement or from which no one has an incentive to unilaterally deviate. So, I hope this interesting example has clarified a lot of these subtle details uh, about the Nash equilibrium and uh, Pareto optimality etcetera and Gibbs. Uh, please go through it and try to understand it uh, better thoroughly. Thank you, thank you very much and we will look at other games in the next module. Thank you.